Did you call bank? I call game. What's up, Pack Nation? It is Pack here, and if you have not heard the news, there was a bunch of people recording videos of NBA 2K20 at a live event in Las Vegas that 2K had basically promoted and like invited all these celebrities to go play 2K and everybody was recording on their phones a bunch of gameplay so that's what I'm gonna cover in this video there was 15 things I was able to find I literally looked at every single video like I could find and I went through it inch by inch second by second and try to find everything I could find that was new about NBA 2K20 and before this video starts be an OG, join the Pack Nation, and subscribe. Also, if you want to enter my NBA 2K20 giveaway, I'm giving away five copies of the game. All you have to do is follow me on Instagram, and I'll put you in a randomizer, and you could win NBA 2K20 for free. Now, a lot of this stuff will be brand new things, and some of the stuff will be things that I noticed, but these are 15 things that I was able to get out of this footage for NBA 2K20. Let's get this started. So this list has 15 things, and I'm starting at number 15. The first thing is that we have a brand new start menu. Of course, they do a new start menu every single year, and it's been kind of a cutoff here, but you can see the brand new NBA 2K logo right there. Pretty simple, just adding the 20 at the end. You have Anthony Davis on the left. It is not the full thing because it's been cut off, but it's a pretty nice start menu. Nothing special here. Not the most important thing on this list, but that's why I have it at number 15. The next thing on this list at number 14 is something that also isn't that important more aesthetic wise. It is the scoreboard. First of all, someone's getting bodied 56 to 0. Here you see the Lakers and the Clippers. This is the brand new scoreboard. Not too, too different. It is different though. It like for sure is different. And I like that they change the scoreboards every single year because then it feels like it's a new game, the new aesthetic and everything. I enjoy it when they change things, things like that, like the menu, the scoreboard, highlight play, like animations are different as well all those little things matter to me because it then it feels like it's a brand new 2k and the aesthetic matters too now we're at number 13 on this list for nba 2k20 and that is celebrities so a lot of celebrities got some scans like a little pump and stuff like that a lot of these celebrities a lot of them that i don't really know to be honest got these entire body and face scans now at first i thought they were just going to add them into my career that's what they do but because there's so many celebrities doing this like a lot a lot I think, and this has been rumored, that they're going to do celebrity players in 2K. Like they're going to have a celebrity team and you can use them in NBA 2K20. That's what's been the rumor lately. I'm not going to say that's confirmed, but that's what it's been looking like so far, especially because they've been face scanning so many people. That would be pretty cool. Obviously, we're going to need bigger names. I mean, these are famous people, but I don't know many of them, to be honest. They're not like household names. We need Drake, Snoop Dogg, people like that. That'd be pretty funny to use in NBA 2K20. The next thing at number 12 is the crowd. So usually the crowd is pretty much the same every single 2K. And this is the first year I think they actually changed it a little bit. The crowd is actually moving all the time. Some of them are actually putting their hands up, touching their chin, reacting towards the game. I notice now when people make shots, the whole crowd actually like gets excited. I've been noticing that a lot in this footage that the crowd moves a good amount. Now, I don't want to say this is for sure completely different, but so far to me, it's been looking improved. Like there's again, the random movement, random people in the audience talking to each other. The faces don't look as blurry as usual. I think this is much better. What I'm hoping for that matters more than anything is that the team and the crowd get really hyped when it's close game. And like, let's say you hit a game winner. I want the crowd to go insane. I feel like they don't do that in recent 2Ks, hopefully they fix that in 2K20. Now at number 11 on the list, and this one's also pretty important in my opinion, and that is bench celebrations. Before, you would hit a shot and the bench would not react. Now your whole entire bench will like grab each other's like arms and shoulders and push each other and laugh. This is honestly pretty exciting to me. The NBA has a lot of bench celebrations, like the Nets always have some pretty funny ones. And now we can have that in 2K. It's adding the simulation and experience even greater in NBA 2K20 when you're hitting a shot and you see your bench laughing or jumping or anything like that. I'm excited for that. They can hopefully have some really funny ones, hopefully. The next one at number 10, this is where the stuff is gonna get a little more important. First is Danny Green. It looks like he has a brand new face scan, beard and hairstyle, completely different now on the Los Angeles Lakers. This is also the first time we get to see Danny Green in a Los Angeles Lakers uniform and his face scan in NBA 2K20. Looks pretty solid to me. The body scan looks about the same. I don't think they changed body scans that much this year. Again, we all know that they're not going to focus too much on this 2K. They're going to have a big update graphically in the next generation 
of 2K, so not yet. But still, it looks good here with an update for Danny Green. Another player I saw that got updated was Kyle Kuzma on the Lakers. You can see that now he has longer hair on the top of his head. And this is pretty important too. To be honest, the Lakers and the Clippers are probably going to be the best teams in the NBA next season. You need all of those players on those teams to be looking as accurate as possible. They always do this with the Warriors and the Cavs for the past couple years. Now they're going to need to be doing it for the Clippers and the Lakers. And it looks pretty solid so far for Kyle Kuzma. The next thing at number eight, and this one's kind of annoying, is that mid-ranges are still awful. Here's a shot of Clippers. Zubac shooting a wide open mid range shot super close to the basket. Zubac can, for the most part, hit these, and I think the, these players are either playing in rookie or pro difficulty, and he misses it because it was a barely early release and it was wide open. No, that should not miss at all. That should be an automatic bucket for the most part, unless you're shooting it way too early or way too late, maybe. But that's a wide open shot that's gonna bother me. I know it's like one situation, but. Most NBA players are going to hit that all day, every day, and that's going to bother me. I really hope they fix that because mid-ranges have been so bad in this 2K. Unless you're doing fadeaways in your shot creator, mid-ranges are really bad in this 2K. So hopefully they address this in NBA 2K20, and so far it doesn't look like they did. The next thing at number 7 is that they changed how the green light animation goes. So now here's Kawhi Leonard shooting a free throw, and when he hits a green, on the bottom, it just flashes. So there's no more bar flashing or anything like that. It's just the bottom of the player. A circle flashes around them as a green light. That's all that happened so far. Before, it would be the shooting bar. It would flash green, but now it's just a circle underneath the player. I'm okay with it. They always change it a little bit every year. I like that a lot. I kind of thought before they should add a sound effect when you hit a green, but we'll see if they added that later on. Now at number six on the list is I think one thing that people complain about is that slashers in 2K don't really get a lot of love. They'll go into the paint and because there's one defender in the paint, they're going to miss that shot. Even if it's heavily contested, there's people who are really good at driving the paint. Even when it's contested, they should still be able to make it. And I see this right here. Now, I don't know what difficulty they're playing on either if it's pro or rookie, but they're for sure playing on a lower difficulty. But even then... This player was able to drive in the paint with three defenders. It was a heavily contested and early shot, and he still hit it. That's a, honestly pretty important to me. Most of the time in 2K, you can be wide open and honestly miss it. This guy hit it in three defenders in the paint and still went in. That's a pretty big sign that slashers might be getting love this 2K. The next one at number five is that maybe it looks like to me blow by animations have returned. So, one thing that I hated from 17 is that you could just blow by your defender and get an easy basket all the time. And here you see Paul George catching it in the corner, driving and going right by LeBron James. It's clear as day that that's a blow by animation. And they fixed that in this 2K and I guess they're going to return it for 2K20. Now, to be fair, LeBron is kind of late to defend Paul George. That's why he probably got that blow by animation to go in. I don't mind blow by animations if the defender is late to play defense. But if the defender is there and you can just go right through them, I don't know if that's fair enough. So hopefully it's just a situational thing, not you can just blow by on the baseline any moment you want. That's gonna mess up the game really bad. Hopefully that's not what we think it is. Now at number four on this list is the brand new shot meter. I'm sure you all saw it already. For some reason they went decided to go back to NBA 2K17 where it was the meter below the player. Now technically this meter is better because it gives you more time to calculate where the green light is. It's a full bar instead of half of a bar technically. However, that's what people have been saying, but 2K19 allowed you to change which bar you wanted to use for your shot meter. And here is very, very, very grainy footage, but it looks like to me this person has the normal shot meter. Now it might be their armband, I can't tell, but it looks like to me that's a shot meter also right next to them shooting. So maybe you're able to customize them or maybe the shot meter is below, but people believe that there's a brand new shot meter. Now at number three on the list, it is the coverage detection system. So before in 2K, it would show you your release shot and it would also show you how covered you are, either smothered, contested, stuff like that, lightly contested, smothered. Now it shows you a percent of how covered you are. Right here, it says 2% covered. There's other ones that say like 53% or even like 90%. So now it's going to show you exactly how covered you are. I actually kind of like that. It gives you more of an exact number. And now it's going to give you a number if you know like how close it is or not. I think it's actually pretty important. I think it's dumb before when you were getting covered and someone was barely close to you. Oh, that's slightly contested. But in reality, 
That's just not how that works. When if it was only like 3% contested, it shouldn't be considered lightly contested. So that's why I think this is a good idea for 2K. It makes the competitiveness, I think, a little better. I think this affects the gameplay very well. And I think shooters will be able to shoot their shots when they're open and, and not be able to make them when they're not open much more accurately. Now, number two on this list, and that is that people believe that TakeOver has returned. Now, this is the big debate right now, and I want to go through that. Let me talk about first TakeOver. So here is a picture below the player. There's a little sign or picture right below the Lakers player. And people don't know if this is TakeOver or not, because we have not seen anybody actually use normal TakeOver. Like how we see in 2K, you have a bar, it fills up, and then on the bottom left, you have your little icon showing you have takeover. That has not been shown in this footage so far. We have not seen that yet, but there's a little icon below players and people think that's a brand new takeover. It might be, but at number one, that's the thing, people believe it's either takeover or it's the grand badge. See, it's completely likely that the people that played 2K in this event sucked at the game and so they weren't able to get takeover because they weren't good enough. And people believe that some players have the grand badge below them. And that's another thing that you can also activate. So people think you can get takeover and also grand badge. Now, I don't know if this is actually going to happen or not. We'll see. I personally believe this is just takeover. It's not grand badge at all. But I might be wrong. We'll find out soon enough. That is it for this video, you guys. What do you guys think about all of this footage? Did I miss anything that you found? Leave it in the comments below. Are you excited about this 2K20? Honestly, I kind of am. Like, this is when the year starts getting like kind of hype because all the news starts coming out and the leaks and it's, it's getting pretty excited. Thank you guys for watching. And if you like this channel, give it a sub. And I'll see you guys next time. Did you call a bank?